G'day folks, inside this little box here we have Bianca's Chrissy present. And she's out with the girls at the moment, so I'm going to quickly try and plan it out and film this video. It's going into this little wicking barrel down here. Now wicking barrels, uh, for you folks who aren't aware, I like to use them a lot. I've got a number of videos of them on the channel, how to make them. There'll be a little link that pops up there so you can suss that out. Uh, but this is the inside of one. Uh, there's a few different variations, but the basic idea is you need to create a lot of void in the bottom to hold water that comes in via a fill tube and then that water then wicks up through sand. I like to use sand as a wicking medium because it wicks a lot better than scoria and rocks and other bits and pieces. And that comes up into the soil layer and from there it wicks up further until it hits the plant's roots. And of course the plant's roots grow down to meet the water as well. And it just keeps the plants very well hydrated. I've had these things, these reservoirs, water plants anywhere up to a week and a half, depending on the season or the variety of plants in there. So I find them a phenomenal way to grow. I've made massive beds out of these things, little pods out of IBCs. And like I said, I do have a playlist that is also linked down in the description that runs through a various different methods I've used to wick these little barrels up. Oh, and by the way, we do have a little exit port there. So if you do get a torrential downpour, any excess water just comes out the side there. Now this banana tree here, the Cavendish banana, thank you very much Owen, is grown in an air pruning pot from Brian. Thank you very much Brian. He gave it to me to trial a while ago. And that is just sitting in a tray of water. So it's basically the same thing as if you stick your pot plant in a tray of water, it wicks it up. And just with this method here, we have a lot more water in there and the plants can survive a lot longer. Uh, just to show you, we have a wicking barrel here with some refugees from the aquaponic system from last season. These little blighters down here, the grasshoppers, uh, they've already made a meal out of the sweet potato. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll get a half decent harvest from the tubers when they come up. Uh, this barrel here that I'll be planting into is also an old wicking barrel. It had potatoes in it last. And at the moment, it's got some volunteer Chinese red amaranth, some Egyptian spinach, more amaranth and some purslane as well as a little bit more advanced amaranth in it. So what I'm going to be doing is taking some of that soil out, putting in a citrus fruit blend, which gives you a bit of an idea of what we've uh, purchased and just to freshen up the soil. And just to show you another wicking barrel, this is our turmeric one. Uh, this one's been going for a number of years now. And yeah, we just come out and knock off little bits and pieces of rhizome. There's a couple of mothers from last season um, as we need it. So. Yes, I suppose I should probably um, stop nattering on and give you a look at what's in the box. And it is from the Fruit Salad Tree Company. So, as I said, this is a fruit salad tree. It's come from the Fruit Salad Tree um, Company down on the mid north coast of New South Wales, Telegraph Point area. And it comes boxed in this very handy little cardboard box. As you saw, there's uh, vent holes. I'll just grab it. Vent holes in the top of the box here so the um, the plant survives transit. Uh, it can last anywhere up to a week the way they pack it from what I've read on their website. By the way, not a sponsor at all. I paid full price. Um, I just know people have purchased these. I think they're a fantastic idea. So as you can see on the side of the box, it's got a little cut here symbol. So all you need to do is just run your knife down there and that way you won't be hurting any of the plant. And then open her up a bit. And then we can grab the root by the base. Oh, sorry, the root, the plant by the base and pull it out. So what we have here, according to the tag and what I ordered, uh, is a Tahitian lime and a Maya lemon. Now we already do, if I can jerkily raise this camera up, we already do have a rather impressive lime tree here that does have a number of fruits already set on it at the moment. But unfortunately it's sort of right in the middle of our backyard and it's sort of, something we would prefer to have around the fence line of the property so we can open the place up and use um, make use of the space so what we decided to do was to grab this little fella here pop it in the wicking tub for a couple of years or maybe 12 months however long it takes get it a little bit more advanced and then we'll pop it out somewhere in the yard or if we end up moving out of this place we can take the wicking barrel and the tree and plant it in our new home so Yes, um, Bianca is going to be very chuffed about this. She did, she did know I was buying her a lemon, but she didn't know that it was going to be a fruit salad tree. They've included this little pamphlet in with the, um, the tree. 
So they do stone fruits, citrus fruits, and apples as well. I mean, there's a load of folks out here there who are even watching this that can graft their own trees on, once they get a suitable root stock, you know. Um, that's something I've always wanted to have a crack at. I've had a couple of attempts and they've failed. So I figured I might as well um, get one done by a professional. So that's why I ended up purchasing one. Um, but I've also thought that we know people with mandarins and I could just put a sneaky graft on here and stick a mandarin out the side and have a crack at it myself. So it also comes with this little care instruction booklet um, talking about keeping your tree well balanced, removing the woods, uh, the rootstock, that's if you get any suckers come through. Uh, what have we got? Mature height, planting, sun requirements, I'll straighten it up for you. Uh, growing in pots, fertilizing, watering, fruiting, shaping your tree over the back there, pest diseases and spraying and then pruning espalier and some more information. So um, this, is, this is fantastic that they include this, but their website, which I'll link below, and YouTube channel also has a load of other information. So suss that out if you want. Um, yeah, like I said, not an affiliate. I get no kickback or I have to pay for this. So yeah, I just think they're a fantastic idea. So anyway, um, that's enough of me rabbiting on about the, um, the tree itself. Uh, just to show you what I'm going to do, I do have a couple of bags of citrus blend there, as you may have seen before. So what I'm going to do is dig out approximately 50 litres of soil from this wicking barrel, uh, pop that in there, maybe some other potting mix as well, freshen it up a bit, harvest any potatoes I missed when I did the last harvest, and yeah, we'll pop this little baby in. So it's a bit of a shame to be taking out this little plant here, but we have a massive one growing in the aquaponics. Um, so yeah, we really have no issue with um, needing more amaranth. I've got actually growing the other one to set some seeds. You gonna take this away for me? Take it down the compost heap? Good boy, good boy. So he's not gonna really put in the compost heap. He's gonna chew on it. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we'll get into this. Uh, take out this top layer, just into my little barrow down the back there. And the spuds were growing mainly on this side. Yep. I've chopped one in half, so there's half a potato. I'll pop him in there. And these wicking barrels, I like to uh, try and replenish the um, top layer of soil between crops, every, every couple of crops, um, just with some compost and whatnot, but we don't actually have any on the go at the moment because all our um, scraps have been going into the guinea pigs or <laughs> even to Jack, because he doesn't mind munching on a bit of vegetation here or there. So now with this citrus blend, just grab my handy dandy knife, cut her open from the bottom, dump her in. So that's the two bags. And yes, we do need a little bit more potting mix. I'm actually going to be um, overfilling the barrel because this soil will settle. Wow, there's a lot of bark in there by the look of it. I'll grab that other stuff and give it a quick mix in. So it's got my fork and the other potting mix here. Pop some of this in. Give this all a little bit of a mix around. Those roots will be sitting down in that nice, rich citrus blend potting mix down the base there. What I might do though, is just take out a little bit of the potting soil so we can stick the tree in and we'll pop that back in around it. So now for our little plant. Oh yeah, that's, that's beautiful. So just gonna Take this tag off and unwrap the base. And it's actually in a nursery bag there. So you might be able to see there that the base of the bag is still rather moist. So it's been in there for, oh, four to five days now. And it has done fairly well. So I think I might just bring her up a little bit more. So what I'm actually after is this top soil level here to sit about oh, half a foot or 15 centimeters above the top of the barrel because I think it is going to settle that much. So yeah, roughly around about there, that's about 100 mil. And then we are just going to cut the plastic and pull out the plant. Fairly easy. Oh, I might tease the roots out a little bit. I don't think it's a real big issue. So I think I'll position it Pretty much will like that. So we've got one branch sort of going out on an angle that way, mainly because during winter, the sun comes um, and will hit the, the tree this way here. Um, so it'll just give it a little bit more um, sun exposure through the winter months. And then 
just going to, I don't need to shovel that in, I can just pour it in, I think. So we'll just pour this back in around the tree. There we go. Give it a little bit of a firm press down. So she's sitting probably only about 50 mil or two inches proud of the top there after I gave it a little bit of a push down. It does have some slow release fertilizer in there, but what I thought I might do is just around the exterior here, I'll just put in oh, roughly around about three quarters of a cup of slow release chicken based fertilizer that Jack's gonna love. So I'm gonna have to do something to try and keep him out of here. And then just cover that up with some more potting mix. Actually surprised he's not here already, having a bit of a sniff. Whoops, there we go. Just up around there. And in no time flat, I dare say, this is going to sink down nicely, or I should say settle down nicely. And we'll probably eventually sit just under the lip of this little wicking barrel here. So the only thing I want to do now is just cover this up a bit with some mulch just to try and A, deter Jack from digging up the uh, slow release pellets, but also just try to um, stop too much moisture evaporating out from the surface of the pot itself. And of course we have to water it in and spray Jack because he likes it. <laughs> so just give it a bit of a gentle blast with the hose here. It also helps to settle down the, um, the sugar cane mulch some blow any excess off and that water will go straight through into the soil and give the tree a nice drink. So I can also be a little bit cheeky here and take the uh, hose head off and just pop the hose down the side there until the reservoir is full, which is pretty much what it was already. And we're pretty much well done. So Bianca and the girls just turned up and I thought I'd give you a gratuitous pineapple shot while we wait for Bianca to get down here. Looking pretty good, hey Jack? Not for you to munch. So Bianca, what do you think? <laughs> you like? I do like, very much. Do you know what it is? Citrus. Citrus. And did you see how many graph points there are on it? There's two. Two graph points. So what do you reckon? Lemon and lime. Lemon and lime. Yeah, because we've been talking about taking this dear old lady out for a while now, haven't we? Yes. Yeah. Oh, she's got fruit all over her. She's it. got fruit. Yeah, it's not happening anytime soon because we have little fruit everywhere. But as you can see, we get a lot of um, intervenial chlorosis on the plants and we've tried loads of, on the leaves I should say, we've tried loads of different methods to try and correct that. And it only ever lasts for a week or two using a heavy dose of citrus food. Probably has something to do with everything else that's growing underneath there. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's also in the middle of the yard. So... We have other plans for that space, don't we, babe? Yes. 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 So, um, you happy? Yes. You happy. Now, one thing we will have to do, though, um, as I mentioned to the viewers, is there is um, chicken fertilizer in a circle around the base. Mm. So, little Mister here. Hang on. He's is, already sniffing. He's already sniffing. I think he's going to be very interested into um, what that smell is. So, I might get a uh, just some chicken wire and just wrap it around there. And just keep it protected for a little while. But you're happy? Yes. Good Chrissy present? Yes. We don't normally buy each other presents unless they're practical and this is something we've wanted for a while. And hopefully it'll be on the back of a uh, ute or a trailer soon and go into our new property. Yes. What do you reckon? Even better. Even better? Give us eight months? Oh, you're rather blurry. Give us eight months? Yes. Eight months. Eight months. Yeah. Eight months. All right. So don't hold us to it, folks. But yeah, eight months hopefully. But anyway, pretty much we'll leave it there. You're going to say goodbye, Jack? Jackie no. boy, He's yeah, say goodbye. Sniff chicken nice. poop instead. Sniffing chicken poop. And guinea pigs. Just coming down to Bianca's level here. Um, oh, crazy eyebrows. Uh, before, just wanted to uh, wish everyone out there who has been following us uh, throughout the years a very happy Christmas, holidays, however you celebrate it. We don't care. What's the other one called? Uh, stretchy Fismas. Stretchy, stretchy Fismas. happy Stretchy Fismas. Um, inside joke there. Um, so yeah, I do hope you all have a fantastic one. A special thanks to those folks who are supporting us. Yes. It's not just me, it's Bianca as well. Over on the Podia platform, the Farm Your Own Yard group, and also you Facebook, sorry Facebook, YouTube members, and everyone who's bought the guide, thank you very much for the support purchasing that as well. Yes. But i got to wrap it up, don't I? Yes. Yes. I will leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy. And your aquaponics which is behind you, I'm so used to saying it, and your gardens are booming, 
and we'll catch you next season, next year. Catch you, folks. Bye. Happy Merry Christmas. Christmas.